guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be doing one of my favorite recipes of all time, I've been making it for years. They are copycat Cinnabon cinnamon rolls and they are absolutely amazing. You are going to love them. And I'm also gonna be showing you how I do my caramel rolls. It's basically the same recipe, but the topping is different. So instead of like a cream cheese frosting, you're gonna use a caramel on top and they are so good. And this video is also a collab with my friend Julia from Julia Pacheco. I'm sure you've heard of her, but if you haven't, she does tons of what's for dinner. She does cooking, she does desserts, she does lots of copycat recipes, and she is also doing a copycat recipe today. So I'm gonna have her link down below. Head over there when you're done watching this video, check her out, subscribe, give her some love. And if you are coming over from Julia's channel, I just want to say welcome. My name is Caitlin, I have two kiddos, I have a two year old and I also have a nine month old. I do lots of what's for dinners on my channel every single week. I do a little bit of everything. I do cooking, cleaning. I do lots of get it all done videos. Any type of motivational mommy content is what I do on my channel. I would love to have you so consider hitting that little subscribe button and let's go ahead and get cooking. You're going to start off by adding two and a quarter teaspoon of quick yeast into a bowl. I put mine in my mixing bowl, don't do that because otherwise you have to transfer it later like I did. And then you'll also need one cup of milk. You do wanna make sure that it's warm milk so that yeast gets nice and activated. And then I let this set for about five minutes until you can see that bubbles are starting to form. Like you can tell, I put mine in my mixing bowl so I just transferred that over so I could add it back into my mixing bowl later on. Now into my mixing bowl, I'm adding in half a cup of just regular plain white sugar. And then you'll also need about a third cup of either butter or margarine. I'm just using Smart Balance, that's what I always use and it works just fine for this. You'll also need two eggs and one teaspoon of regular salt. And then you can go ahead and mix this together until it's just combined. It doesn't have to be fully, fully mixed together, but I like to give it just a quick little mix before adding in the flour. And then for the flour, you're gonna be adding in, give or take about three and a half cups of flour. The recipe calls for four cups, and I would say that's probably about what I add total at the end. But I like to start with three and a half cups, and then I gradually add up to that four cups when I'm kneading it. So now I'm just adding in that yeast and milk mixture, add that right into your mixing bowl and then you're going to be attaching your kneading attachment on there versus like the regular mixing paddle attachment. You'll see that everything is starting to kind of form together and now this is where I add in that extra flour. Like I said, you're going to want about four cups total so just kind of add it until you get the texture that you want. You'll see here in a second what it should look like when it's done. You should be able to just kind of press your finger in and it shouldn't be sticky anymore, but you don't want it to be too hard. But I would say if you have never done this before, do four cups of flour and you'll be able to find the right consistency. So after it's all mixed together, you wanna make sure it's really well combined. You're just gonna be oiling a glass bowl. You can use plastic, but I definitely do prefer glass if you have that option. And then you're just gonna put your dough in there, flip it around so you make sure that all of the sides are oiled. And then you're gonna stick this in a warm spot to let it rise. Now one little tip is I like to let mine rise in the oven. Now don't have your oven on. I like to turn mine on for just like 30 seconds to get a little bit of heat started in there and then I shut it off right away and then I stick my dough in there and let it rise for about one hour and it comes out perfect every single time. So I actually made a double batch of the rolls. I did one pan of Cinnabon cinnamon rolls and then I did one pan of caramel rolls. So you see me mixing up two different toppings here, but all the topping is for one batch is one cup of packed brown sugar and then one heaping tablespoon of cinnamon. So you're just gonna stir that up and set that aside for the filling of the rolls. 
I have been making these cinnamon rolls for seriously years now and I will see if I can find the link for the recipe. I found it years ago so I don't know if I have the original link but otherwise I will go ahead and type it all out and I'll have it in the description box down below. After your yeast has doubled in size, you're going to flip it out and flour both sides. Make sure that you do flour your surface that you're working on. I completely forgot, so I had to go back and do it later. And then you're going to do a little bit of flour on top. This will just help it from sticking to your rolling pin and sticking to whatever you're rolling the dough out on. And then you're going to start pressing this out into a large rectangle shape. Basically, you just want to try and get it as close to a rectangle as possible. This is going to help your rolls be nice and even in size. And then I'm just taking about half a stick of softened butter and just spreading that across the dough. You can use about half a stick or you can use a little bit more. You just need a really thin layer like you were buttering toast or something. And then you're just going to take that brown sugar and cinnamon mixture and spread that across the dough in a nice even layer. And then you'll just be rolling this up into one giant log and when I'm doing this I do kind of tuck in the ends a little bit by doing that it just keeps the rolls all the same size otherwise the ends can tend to be a little bit thin so just try and tuck it as you go make sure you spray your baking dish or whatever pan you're using I like to use a cake pan for mine and then you're just gonna start cutting out the rolls you do want to make sure that you're using a very sharp knife for this otherwise it kind of makes the rolls a funky shape so make sure it's super sharp and then you're just gonna cut this log into 12 rolls they should be about an inch and a half wide And then you'll just cover the baking dish with a towel and set it aside for about another hour until they have risen a little bit more. I did want to include how I make my caramel rolls because it's pretty much the same thing except it's going to be a different topping than the Cinnabon cinnamon rolls. Same dough recipe, same filling, but the topping is different. So here you see me putting caramel on the bottom of the pan where the cinnamon rolls are going to go. So I'm just doing one stick of soften butter spread that all along the bottom of your pan and then you'll be sprinkling on one cup of brown sugar And then you're going to be drizzling it with a little bit of this light corn syrup. I'm sorry you don't have exact measurements, but you basically just take it and drizzle it right over the top until you think it looks good. This is how my mom has always done it, and it turns out really, really good. So that is how I do it as well. And then you're just going to go ahead and cut the cinnamon rolls just like we did before and put them right in the pan and let them rise that way with the caramel on the bottom part. So this is what the rolls look like after they've risen for the second time and they're all ready to go in the oven. So just preheat your oven to 350 degrees and then I bake mine for anywhere from 20 to 25 minutes. You want them to be a light golden brown on top and make sure they're done in the center. And these are seriously heaven. I absolutely love them. 
And then in my mixing bowl here for my icing, I just have six tablespoons of butter and a quarter cup of cream cheese. And I'm just gonna add in a little bit of vanilla, about half a teaspoon I would say, and then a little bit of salt, maybe like an eighth of a teaspoon. And then you're gonna whip that all together with your mixer attachment and you want it to be nice and well whipped. And then you'll add in one and a half cups of regular powdered sugar and you're going to mix that all together until everything is super well combined. It's a nice creamy consistency that's really good for the rolls. And then you're just gonna go ahead and spread that cream cheese mixture right on top of your rolls. I would let them sit for just a couple minutes after they come out because you don't want the icing to melt off. Give them about like five minutes or so to cool a little bit and then get that icing on there where they're still nice and warm and it'll kind of melt into the roll. And these are absolute heaven. You're going to love them. If you have never made cinnamon rolls, I challenge you, this is the best time to get your baking on. We're all stuck at home. Try it out let me know what you think in the comments I know you're going to love this recipe And now for the caramel rolls, all you've got to do is flip them over so the caramel is now on top of the rolls. And that is it for the caramel rolls. These are absolutely delicious too. My husband prefers the caramel, but I really love the Cinnabon cinnamon rolls. Well, that is it for this recipe. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that little subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to go check out Julia's channel. She is so sweet. Again, link is down below. Go subscribe, watch her video, and let her know that I sent you. But that is it for today's video. I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.